Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. Hope you're on a great day. Uh, you're listening to or watching Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm here sitting virtually next to my co-host, Joshua Crouch. Uh, is, uh, I'm super excited about today's show. We're going to talk about the X factor, how you stand out with your business. Uh, we're talking with with Pete Ramsey. Uh, he's a uh, an uh, Army vet and uh, huge shout out to, uh, to to Pete for that. And thank you for, for your service. Uh, then he left there, became a technician and then started a business sold it uh then went uh, to work for linux for a while and is now in the coaching side of things and uh, so i'm super excited to talk about uh hvac x factor and um really uh, how you can stand out in a crowd it, everybody that that knows me uh has listened to the show for a while especially if you're anywhere around savannah uh you know uh, Jesse Cole and the whole team over at Savannah Bananas and the whole concept there with the bananas and the, the find your yellow tux. Uh, if you, if you're watching this video, you can see behind me, his book is actually sitting right there behind me on the shelf. Uh, the yellow book, um, find your yellow tux. So how you stand out. And so like, that's kind of what I've always kind of taken to, to heart. There's a reason why I'm, I wear a three piece suit to, out in public and uh, that's your yellow tux that's my yellow tux with a with a ball cap and so i think you should uh, just do an orange tux <laughs> i actually have one but the problem is is that i look like dumb and dumber whenever i'm wearing it so it's like um yeah that it definitely it's it's an awkward one because the one that i actually found has these like huge lapels on it and i'm like uh yeah this is this is not gonna work <laughs> yeah i don't think they make orange suits in bulk so they're, they're, you gotta like special order but you gotta find some off the wall store that has something yeah. like that exactly yeah but yeah i'm super excited um to have pete on and, and i know that that you've you've spoke with pete um you know a good bit in the past so you have a, a little bit more of a relationship so i'm gonna definitely dive into the the fact that i I'm ignorant in this situation in this conversation. So I, I, I love those, those is, words because is that different than any other episode. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's, <laughs> that's most every of the episodes, which are great I'll because I can I'll just, season. I can really, I'm, I'm not the, I'm not the type of person that I'm afraid of, of looking dumb or sounding dumb. So, uh, I'll ask the craziest questions in the world. So, yeah. 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 No, uh, Pete, what he focuses on is, a lot of times businesses, especially contractors, are great at what they do. That's why they started their business. They're a great tech. They're great at sales. They're great at something. But they don't know how to let the rest of the world and their customers know that. So that way people remember you and they have a certain emotional feeling mm -hmm. about your business. Because we all know at this point, people buy totally irrational reasons they buy because they feel something and uh <clears throat> that's what pete's program is about and we'll i won't get into too much of that i'll let him talk about it but um he's he talks about bringing the greatness out of your hvac business which this can apply to any any type of service business yeah absolutely cool let's get started with the show Are you looking for valuable business advice to reach that seven-figure revenue mark? Do you want actionable tips to properly navigate through every business challenge you encounter along the way? Let Tersh Blissett and Josh Crouch be your guide in getting you to the top here at Service Business Mastery. Tune in as they sit down with world-renowned authors in business, leadership, and personal growth who share valuable insights about management, marketing, pricing, human resources, and so much more. Let their nuggets of wisdom gold guide you in owning a thriving, profitable, and ever-growing business. Here are your hosts, Tersh and Josh. Welcome, Pete. Hey, Josh. How you doing? Hey, Tersh. Hey, man. Hey guys. Doesn't that music just kind of want to make you? I know, just right? Makes you want to move a little bit. <laughs> no, it was awesome. It's awesome. No, I yeah, appreciate the opportunity. You guys, uh, I'm a big fan. Um, been watching both you guys uh, you know, on and off as I can. But right. uh, <laughs> what a nice uh, impact you guys are having on our market. We really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. It's our pleasure. Uh, we love the connection aspect of it. Uh, really, 
introducing people to like just meeting guys like you on the show and uh cassie who we interviewed this morning uh and uh just being able to connect her and you and other guests together with with either contractors or other guests on the show which is it's really it's it really is awesome that's what our main focus is really helping to ask the unasked questions answer those unasked questions that contractors may have or even technicians and and managers who may be considering starting their own business and so that's that's our whole that's our mission is to to be that connector and uh so we we especially thank people like you that come in as the as an expert and um are willing to answer some of these ridiculous questions that i have uh so <laughs> <laughs> with that being said tell us a little bit about yourself and why you do what you do now so yeah i appreciate that and, and i appreciate what you're doing too um so yeah um i've been in heating and air conditioning since <laughs> 1982 so it shows how old i am coming up on 40 years dang I feel old i know right um, well, I was air conditioning say anything, was it but... even invented back then? I mean, I, I was, yeah, I was air conditioning. Well, I was yeah, born um, in '83, so 85 years. So sorry, Pete, you're gonna feel a little old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was back when Willis, uh, what's the name? Uh, Willis Carey yeah, invented AC. <laughs> but, you, but, you guys uh, are neighbors, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no, um, actually, it was the recruiter that got me. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They sent me to Fort Belvoir, Virginia, to. Uh, study heating and air conditioning refrigeration and so that's, that's cool the old saying it's a great place to start uh it was certainly true in my case but uh, but yeah i um uh left the military uh went into the civilian aspect of it was hired as a junior service technician i was really young and um just continued to you know put in the hours and uh worked for a few companies uh worked on refrigeration worked on some chillers worked mm -hmm. on a little bit of boilers but ultimately decided I had to do this for myself. And, and I started my company back in 1989. Okay. 1989. And, uh, uh, went through all the struggles, made every mistake you can possibly make. But during my 10 years before I sold it, I, I went from just, you know, out there struggling like everybody else to, we had a nice team. We, we had a good culture. We had about 14 total employees. Um, we had uh, a really good uh, area of the market. Um, we were right up against Charlotte in the in that area. Okay. And like I said, you know, we got a lot right, but um, you know, we we learned our lessons uh, the honest way too, and and uh, and got our bumps and bruises along the way. So, can I ask you a question real fast about your transition from Army into the civilian world? Yes. So, uh, and it, it's going to be different you know, for every person, but uh, how was that transition, even though you were doing, you know, refrigeration and, and whatnot in, in the army coming to the civilian side of things and uh, getting into commercial refrigeration, how was that transition there? I mean, cause we all, it, Josh and I both prior service, your prior service, you go from hero to zero and that's a whole concept in yeah. itself. And then you you're, but you're getting out of, government quote-unquote refrigeration and air conditioning and moving into the civilian world which is done a, a little bit different yeah it, it I, I, that's the first time anybody's asked me that and that's a great question um i think i think accountability and uh, uh i think the ability to measure yourself was was part of the biggest transition for me because i remember going from a scenario where uh, you know, the, the discipline was so strong. Um, we had we had checklists, we had procedures, and, and it was just a certain way of doing things mm -hmm. into a world where I can remember standing so that my boss couldn't see my shoes because they weren't clean and because we always had them with a high buff, you know, serious. <laughs> and, you know, going out to customers and and just really just being thrown out there without a process with. Yeah. Just, Go figure it out. No know? SOPs. <laughs> no SOPs. I had, I had a, a a guy come in and uh, we hired him straight from the Navy. And actually, everybody that's on board with us right now, that's in the field anyways, um, our prior service, they weren't air conditioning. But this one was. He was Navy. Uh, he was worked on a submarine. He was a refrigeration guy there. Uh, and he came on board with us. 
and all he had known was Navy for 15 years, I think, or something mm -hmm. like that. And he was like, where's your SOP for this? What's your, where's your manual for this? I'm like, where's your man? Book? You haven't, <laughs> I, I haven't been asked that in so long. I was like, it's all digitized. Like we, everything we have here is like, yeah, but I need, I need oh. the steps on this. I was like, Oh, we are not the Navy. We are not the government. <laughs> like I'm not going to give you every single step on how to charge a refrigerator or a charge a unit. Uh, but I was like, wow, I completely forgot how that process, like how strict everything was and very regimented. Yeah, it was definitely a culture shock. Mm -hmm. And it, it's funny how quickly that becomes ingrained in, in, in a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. But um, but it was a move for the best. I mean, you know, I was a civilian at heart. So it was, it was nice to get back out there, you know, yeah. in the real world. Yeah. So then you you had your business. Uh, you, you started your own business in, in 1989. And then uh, you exited there and you went to work for the manufacturer, right, Linux? I did. Um, I... I sold my business. Um, I went through a divorce and that was my, my primary reason for exiting out. And, you know, I go back to my old market and I look at the companies. I used to kick their butts and they <laughs> are massive now. And so a part of me looks back on that. Like, the, oh, man. The mixed emotions, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but, but I did. I, I said, you know, I've done this. Um, I did notice that my my favorite part of being a business owner was Tuesday morning training when, when I would have all my techs in there and we would go through uh, all our process training and stuff like that. I really enjoy that. And so the transition over to Linux worked because they they made me a territory manager and I got to utilize my skill set by working with <laughs> business owners like yourself. And it was like a consultative sales process you know and mm -hmm. they look forward to pete visiting and it, it, it was really nice it was it was, it was a good transition so I you were that you were that pressure sale uh, that pressure tm you were no you know, no no you no, were no. the guy that came with actual actual knowledge of running a business and how to do it successfully which that's a whole nother segment where yeah, yeah, we, we could get as, on the track there, as but. well as unsuccessfully <laughs> because you know we have that aspect too but yeah. you're right uh, a lot of times um, people would just, it was just so well received and it was really nice. And, yeah. and I was in my learning element as well. I, I was doing a lot of training. I had the audio books going. I had the one third of the state of North Carolina. So I had the entire East coast wow. uh, so from, from the outer banks, you know, Kitty Hawk up that way, uh, oh, Nags yeah. head all the way down to, uh, uh, Calabash, uh, you know, past Wilmington. So it was a beautiful territory, a lot of driving time, a lot of audio training and, and things like this, and a lot of opportunity to learn and get better on that side of the business uh, in terms of interacting with people and gaining their trust. Uh, and it's generally like we do still to this day. It was through, through, through service, yeah. through giving, you know, through mm -hmm. helping others. Yeah. So then you started the coaching aspect of things and I'd like to dive into the X factor and how you came up with this and, and kind of lay it out there for us. Like, what is the X factor? I know we have four, four pillars here that we're going to cover on today's show. Um, but, uh, let's, let's kind of dive into that a little bit. So yeah, the, the first concept was greatness. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a great service technician. I really do good work. Mm -hmm. But yet when I walk into the customer's home and I tell them all the logical reasons why I'm superior and, and why my services are worth more, they nod their head. They tend to agree with me, but ultimately they re revert back to, yeah, but, you know, the other company is this is, is cheaper than you are and right. it's the same stuff. And so mm -hmm. I couldn't break free from. Uh, being lumped into that group. And so I thought, well, how can my greatness you know, bleed through? What, what can I do to set myself apart? And, oh gosh, the CEO of uh, Nuts, um, uh, or I'm sorry, Southwest Airlines, he wrote a book called Nuts and he, he called it One Percenters. And uh, he was asked essentially, you know, how is it that Southwest Airlines, your service is so much better than everybody else's? Mm -hmm. And he said, it's not, it's, it, it's 1% better, but it's 1% better at every customer touch point. And so I started to try to internalize that type of a, of a philosophy in our, in our business, business practices. And it really made a difference. It re really made a huge impact. So um, coming full circle, now I had to go through my bumps and bruises as well, because 
being a business coach for heating and air conditioning contractors, it usually attracts the young struggling guys that really need help. And I, I can't turn them away. And I, so I, I've got to have a price point that works well for them and all that good stuff. But what they were missing ultimately was something deeper than what I had to share. You know, I, I was talking about this earlier on the show. I'm talking to 14 different contractors and I'm trying to be everything to everybody. And ultimately, um, I don't know that I did as a good a job as I could have because once we got focused on the, the X factor, that, that what is that thing about, not just about your company, but about you, mm. that, that, that really makes, you know, when you're the technician at first and you're the one that goes out there and you get your first hire, let's say you hire Josh and you send Josh out there and you, and, and they, they say, you know, Tersh, you know, Josh, a good guy and everything else, but right. you mind taking care of my equipment going forward. We really like you. What is the difference? That's it. That is such a, a real comment because you can see, uh, in the reviews, like even in, in Google reviews, when, when they're saying, uh, the owner of the company, like when that's the technician that goes out there and that's the salesperson and, and whatever that goes out in sight, you can, it's a different review that's left. And it's, oh, yeah. you, can, you can tell that it's like, okay, that person was probably the owner that was out there. Yeah. It'd be a long message. It, it's, it's like a, it's like a couple paragraphs about how awesome. And they did this thing and that thing. And it's not, it's not it, like, yeah. As I soon as I, as soon as I got out of the field, um, like a couple of summers ago, I hopped back in the van and uh, did a summer um, as I was hiring more people because we had an influx of calls and I needed to, I wanted to, I didn't want to turn people away. So I jumped in the van for the summer. Uh, and mm -hmm. as we were hiring people in and onboarding and wrote and, um, and everything, the, we got client, we, we got new clients, commercial clients over that time period. And we slowly have, they've kind of, teetered away not a lot of them but a couple of them have kind of like stepped to the side and said hey look it's nothing about you your company's great and everything but it's not you we're looking for one guy in a truck because that person gives a different service than a company that has seven uh, technicians and i was like ah like dang like i wish i would have known this you know six months ago we could have this conversation and, and that's on me for for that not happening but they really just valued me versus like the whole company. And, and I know we dropped the ball on some things, but uh, it's, it's crazy how different the relationships were between that. So yeah, to that point that the problem is, okay, Tersh comes in and he's got his own personal values, you know, among them may be family, um, um, professionalism, honesty, integrity, caring about his customers, all these different things. You tend to uh, press the emotional responses to people who share the values a good point. in which you overlap, right? And so yeah. they, they're responding to you, um, not necessarily because of who you are, but the way you make them feel. And so when somebody else comes in and they don't share those same values, that same mm -hmm. commitment, the attention to detail, the, uh, the preoccupation of, you know, is everything good? Is, uh, do we cover everything well, thoroughly and, uh, and things of this nature. And so they don't feel that same, uh, um, uh, feeling uh, from the service experience. And so ultimately it boils down to the problem with when you build it around you, Mm -hmm. It can be that you can't scale you. Very true. You, you can't clone off and, and be terse, 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 terse. So what we have to do is take that part of you, externalize it into processes. And here's the key point. Attract employees who share those values. Yeah. And that's the amazing thing there because um, that, that point that you make there is really so accurate because the clientele that we had when I was there and then uh, since left were the ones that that we attached because we tried to do consistency of care, like a continuity right. of care. So the similar technician goes every single time as, as often as possible. Uh, and the technician that was going was assigned to those two clients that I think that come to mind. Uh, 
it, no longer with us. He didn't match our core values. He just, uh, the integrity wasn't there. And so, uh, it, what you say there, it, it's, it's true. I mean, it, it happened with us. It, the, the technician didn't share our same values. Yeah. And so this is why we see so many people hiring based on personality as opposed to experience. You get this new technician mm -hmm. who's got 10 years experience and he's coming in, burning all the bridges that you worked so hard to build to begin That's with. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. And so, um, so, so what it boils down to is if you, if you find the right team made, if you will, and you share those values and you analyze and understand the key characteristics that come naturally for that person in a given role, you'll, you'll know if they're a good fit for that job or not. And if they are and you share values and you have a similar, you know, cultural personality, you, you've developed a culture in essence mm -hmm. and, and, and it gets stronger and stronger. And when you hire people like that, they don't leave. They, they don't go for somewhere, somewhere else for a couple of dollars. Couple on the of dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So is that as far as, cause obviously people are like, well, you know, how do I, how do I figure out what is, what is my X factor, my personal X factor that is going to be, the business is really going to be built on, you know, right. I, I know you have some steps. Do you want to discuss yeah, what's how, you know, yeah. how you find, how you figure that out about yourself? We talked about the four pillars, uh, and you know, I'll touch on that in just a second. But ultimately, it, it starts with doing the work. Uh, you got to go inside. Um, I do this little thing called branding from the inside out, and we do. We go through and we assess your values, and we look to Tersh's point to Google reviews, and we look for emotional responses in those reviews that that are emotionally charged. And so, um, Tersh was great. And he was very reasonable on his price. Well, that value is money. That That's not the one we're really looking for. Mm -hmm. or, 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 but Josh was fantastic. He took the time and explained everything really well so that we understood what we were getting. So now we have a value of somebody that knows how to communicate. right? And so uh, we start to define, okay, what is it about me that people are drawn towards? And what part of me can I accentuate and elevate and and, and, and put out to the world in a way to draw more of that type of customer. So I'm learning, I'm kind of reverse an engineer and how to fish for a certain kind of fish. Yeah. If, if I'm attracting a bunch of price hunting, you know, bargain hunting uh, type customers, you know, I may want to uh, change my approach to how I market myself because I'm appealing to a certain part of somebody that I, I, I really don't want to. And so, so, so yeah, it starts with branding from the inside out. So, what is your why? Why did you do this? Right? What What is your story? How did you come to this point? And we've we've heard the, the the story, and so when you start to look at your values, your story, and your why, you can come into an identity that blends with what your passion with the business is, and create what we call. Um, have you read the book Blue Ocean Strategy by any chance? Yep. Yeah. So for those of you who haven't, um. There, there, there's a theory there that everybody seems to be over in that red ocean mm -hmm. fishing in those bloodied waters of you know, heavy competition. But if you can learn to take and set your, lift yourself out of those waters and over into these fresh blue waters where you don't have all that competition, you can be much more successful. Mm -hmm. right? And so what, what the X factory is, is we're dialing in on this genuine, authentic version of yourself we're building a business on that because in this way, you'll never, you'll never get caught being something that you're not because you, you, you built it on something genuine. And so in the blue ocean, for example, we talked about the uh, U S army Corps of engineers. So my, my story might go like this. You know, when I was in the army, uh, we had these, we had SOPs, everything was done a certain way. And I go out into the civilian world and they just throw me out there. There's, there, there's beer can cold, right? Right. Yeah. Beer can cold <laughs> is, uh, you know, that's good airflow and all these different things. And I realized, you know, this isn't right. And the customer didn't get what they were paying for. You know, callbacks were high. And so when I formed my company, and this is just me riffing yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I said, you know, that's part of who I am. You know, I was an engineer in the army. So I come up with this identity called the comfort engineer. And the comfort engine, it's my power identity, by the way. I am different than everybody else. 
And so I set myself apart, not just with a different identity as, as a comfort engineer. I also have what I call level five service, which in my story, I might utilize, uh, you know, my, that that transition from the military with a pro, with, with very detailed checklist and process and how I have that over into my company now. And so that may be that part of it. So if I have this powerful identity that is drawing the right kind of people, and I do this work that's superior, and I have a way of communicating this, you're getting much more out of me, suddenly the value, the perceived value goes up. As long as the customer interprets that greatness or it, the, the quality and everything that you're doing bleeds through. And so mm -hmm. that leads into the third pillar. Pillar number one is power identity. Mm -hmm. Pillar number two is your unique service or unique approach to service. And number three is what we call Insta Rapport customer experience. And so rapport is one of the seven emotional triggers that everybody, is what Josh said at the very beginning, responds to automatically. People buy for emotional reasons and they justify, justify them logically. That's the way we work. And your customers are no different. And if you learn to press those emotions, you, you, you get a lot more yeses. Mm. And we round that out with the fourth pillar, which is emotional marketing. So we're, we're marketing, not to the logic, we're marketing to those emotions. And of course, the big two are friendship, that's rapport. People do business with people they like. So when you, you're going through that customer experience, if you have a process that builds rapport, you're much more likely to get a customer that's going to do business with you. And if you blend that with the second emotional trigger, and by the way, these come from a book called uh, The Seven Triggers to Yes. And I can't remember the author's mm -hmm. name right now. Really good book. Uh, but the second one is authority, right? And so if you are the authority and you have rapport and you do this right, you transition the the um, dynamic of this confrontation where you're on one side and they're on the other. You're the customer and I'm the maybe a salesperson into sliding, sliding the chair beside them shoulder to shoulder. And we address this problem as a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're working. Well, you're working with well, them. So, exactly. Yeah, I love exactly. that. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, those are the four pillars. But yeah, arriving to that. Uh, creating that identity. And then you have to capture, you know, a really good artist to go out there. And, 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 and this is, I think this is where a lot of heating and air conditioning companies just get it wrong. We think we can do a brand. <laughs> we can't, we, we think, you know, our company name is so cool because it's cool to us in a private way. Yeah. Or our slogan is so great. Uh, you know, the slogan needs to mean something. So let, let's take my example, the comfort engineer. So how can I, what can be my key message that might say, okay, uh, I'm different than everybody else. And so um, how does this sound? Why settle for just another HVAC contractor when you can have your own personal comfort advisor, the comfort engineers, a different kind of comfort company, right? So yeah. that may need to be, be, be kind of dummy down on the wording a little bit, oh, but right, capture, yeah. capture a visual representation of this person, but he has those shared values. Mr. Artist, make that comfort engineer um, look honest because my, my core in, um, values are honesty, integrity, caring, and professionalism. Make him look professional, make him look honest, and make him look like he cares. Mm -hmm. And you can, cap you can capture that kind of stuff visually. Put that on your wrap, put that on your website, and put that out You know, when you're working with people like Josh and things like this. So that the message that you're putting out, it triggers the emotional responses, not the $99 special. Right. Yeah. Not competing on price. Right. Yeah. I love so, that. That is really so good. That, that's the overall concept of that transition. It, and it really is a transition. Now, unfortunately, you know, we're all who we are. I, I talk to guys all the time and say, I want to be like uh, Victor over there in California. I forget Victor's last name. Rancor. He's, he's crushing it. Right. Yeah. So he's crushing it out there. And, you know, I, I tell these guys, you can't be somebody you're not. That's right. You, you, know who you got to be the best you version of you. Yes. Not the best version of someone else. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so your success is directly correlated with how you perceive yourself and what you believe is possible for yourself. 
And so this creates a lot of limiting beliefs about ourselves. I don't know if I can sell. They, they might think I'm selling if I say this or, or you know, I don't know if I, my, I'm good enough to compete with that big company. So that limitation is very real. But the beauty is it's temporary. You, it, it's, a, it's a fluid. It's not written in stone. You can rewire those circuits in your head yeah. into something that serves you better. Absolutely. And I deal with that with, with technicians uh, having the imposter syndrome because I come in and well, from the first time, like when our CSR call, uh, when they call in the CSR just touts the, the service expert and they're, they're an expert in our industry and, and all this, the dispatcher does it, the pre report call. And then they get out there, like all of our you know, notifications are, our expert is on your expert is on the way to you to, to service your home. And then they get there and they're like, I, I have imposter syndrome. Like I'm not an expert. Like I've only yeah. been doing this, you know, a handful of years. Like I, I, I'm not the smartest guy that has ever done <laughs> air conditioning. And so I'm like, dude, you cannot go in there doubting yourself. Like, let's just go in here. And, and like, I, I did a job, uh, on a ride along a couple weeks ago and, uh, the technician was like, man, you just handled that so smoothly. And I was like, that is the first time I've ever done what we just did in my entire life. Like I've never done this before. And he was like, I would have sworn you've done this forever. Like you've always done. I was like, just go in there with confidence and just handle it. Like, just, just do it. And, uh, he's like, all right, cool. And it, it's you, watching him transition has been great. Uh, it's taken, we've been doing two ride alongs a week uh, for about uh, six weeks now. And uh, it's been really eye opening for me and helping the technicians just really come out of their skin. And, and it's like, okay, uh, very, very cool to see exactly what you're talking about. The, the guys that had, I, I didn't know how to vocalize it. And now I kind of understand, like I can share it with the team, but uh, very much uh that's exactly how it, it happens with us so that type of thing okay so you're the business owner and so you had to make that transformation from employee mindset mm -hmm. where your accountability was exterior over into self-employment which now i don't have any boss if i don't want to work today i'm just going to lay, lay around yep. to the, the business owner entrepreneur somebody who has a vision who who is responsible so this requires different disciplines and different mindsets and different beliefs. And it all starts with your core beliefs. And so a ritual, it starts with goals, obviously, but affirmations, gratitude, exercises, um, things, things of this nature. This is where the rewiring becomes reinforced. And so as a business owner, and this is the X factor, by the way, is a huge part of it. Huge, not just the pillars. You got to get there. You got to go through the transformation. You got to get past. I'm not good enough. Imposter syndrome. That grease, the, the grass is green on the other side. To you know, it's based on you know, I'm not good enough or, or something's wrong with me. To what well, you are good at, good at doubling down on that and, and going for it. Now that said, you've got to work on your weaknesses. But mm -hmm. if you reframe the way that you're looking at at, at the scenario. A lot of times that's all it really takes. Instead of being a salesman, be a consultant. That's the consultative service call process that I mentioned earlier that we do that takes all the pressure off the technicians. I hate to sell, but my numbers look better than the sales guy. Why? Because, you know, I'm I'm not going to not go through this process without doing my job. My job is to go over all these things to, with you so that you understand exactly what the status, the assessment is of your system. Right. And so. That that has to happen, not just at the owner level, but as the cultural leader, you have to provide that for your team. So how would you how would you give the team that like because uh, a lot of times they don't know that that's what they need. Uh, and, it, and and sometimes they're going to put up a wall like, hey, look, I don't want I don't want this right here. Like a, it just sounds like some voodoo stuff to me. Like, it, it does. And you, you do have to make it real. Um Stephen Covey called it the paradigm shift. And I'm sure you've read that one. Yeah, that one's pretty yeah. And so it, it becomes that, like I was saying, when you're looking at things one way and you look at them the other, one day I had a, uh, I had a service meeting. Um, it was on, a, it was on a Tuesday. It was on a Tuesday. And I, I'd asked Stacy, he was my technician. I said, um, how did that service call go uh, on Friday with the blower motor over at that church? And Stacy said, well, uh, it didn't go too good. He said, 
uh, the customer said the price was too high and I don't blame him. It was too high. Mm. Mm. So, so you can see right there, he does not believe in our pricing. Well, we were yep. at that time, we were the very first to introduce flat rate pricing in our market. Not only was it new to our customers, it was new to our employees. Mm. I had just finished Ruth King's financial training uh, over at Linux, and I went over to the grease board. So everything's fresh in my mind, right? So I'm going through and we break down everything, everything tit for tat. And we translate it over to uh, the by the hour. I total everything up. And it come to 100, if I remember this right, $119 per hour back then. I said, this is what it costs us. Mm -hmm. And I said, that book is based on 120. Yeah. So, and the same technician said, we need to go up. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, wait, we've got markup on parts. That's not factored in there. But you can see our pricing is very fair. Guys, the, their eyes popped up. The, the, tr the change in, in their behavior was evident because of the change in their beliefs. And that's where it has to start as a leader is we have to understand what beliefs need to be in place to provide the consistent action that I need for this particular role. Yeah, that's great, man. That's, that's good stuff. Uh, really good stuff, I, I, uh, yeah, I, we could be talking for, for hours about this stuff. I mean, obviously <laughs> you, you I've shared my experiences and what, what we've dealt with within our business. And, uh, it's, it's very, uh, real, everything that you're, you're mentioning here, Pete, and we appreciate you coming on the show. Um, where can people reach out to learn more about you and everything that you have going on? I appreciate that, Turch. Uh, yeah, uh, HVAC Greatness. HVAC Greatness uh, at gmail.com is good. Gmail. Okay. Right. Perfect. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate that. Josh, you have anything you want to say while we close out? So I'll cut you off No, here. but Pete's just, he's just a down-to-earth guy. You know, and that's and that's what I love about doing the, the this podcast stuff is we're able to bring people that uh, I, I think deserve to, to be heard by more people, but sometimes there's just not the avenues just aren't there for them to be heard by different audiences and stuff and being able to bring them in front of, you know, a, a lot of people and, and see that they're genuine. They actually care about your success, not just they want to get paid more, I mm -hmm. think is a really rewarding thing. And, and I know I've been following actually when I was still on the contractor side, I'd followed Pete and took some advice from some of his uh, stuff from, when you were doing the videos, the, the video trainings and uh, some of those other things back in the day. So I've been following him longer and he probably even realizes, but uh, <laughs> it, it comes full circle now that uh, you kind of get to, I get to do it on this end and, and, and help him out. But uh, Pete's very down to earth. And, and I think uh, if you're looking, if, if you can't figure out what that is, I think, I think Pete's a, a really good resource for you to figure out how to find that X factor for your business and not just be another chuck in a truck, if you will. Yeah. yeah Thank man. you, Josh. That means a lot coming from you, bro. Really does. Cool. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself, Josh, Pete. Uh, we'll put all the, our information in the show notes. But with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful and safe week. And thank you again for watching this episode of Service Business Mastery Podcast. We'll see you. See you. See you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Service Business Mastery. Now that you are equipped with essential business advice from this impactful conversation, you are one step closer to becoming the successful owner of your dreams. If this episode has been helpful to your business journey, don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a rating, and share it with other owners as well. Visit servicebusinessmastery.com to learn more.